Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by Nabil 3D. My name is Ahmed Nabil and I'll be your host for the evening as we kick off a two-part tutorial series on the basics of modeling. Uh, today, uh, as always, I will be using Blender uh, version 2.7. However, if you're using any other 3D application, that's all right. You can follow along. Uh, the, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Everything is common, so don't worry. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we will be modeling a bolter. A bolter is one of the most recognizable weapons in the science fiction universe of Warhammer 40,000. And if you Google bolter, this is what you get. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a bolter. So, uh, the best thing to do, of course, before you start modeling anything, is to do a bit of research. What exactly is it? How it functions? What is it made of? You know, whether it's some kind of a metal or uh, some kind of a polymer plastic, you know, so on and so forth. Um, that and the research, of course, also includes collecting a lot of reference images, you know, so you know exactly what you're doing, what the bolter looks like, and so on and so forth. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be starting off with a profile view. Uh, this one, in fact, uh, this is a nice, well-drawn profile view of what a bolter looks like. When I mean, this one in particular is a now, let me see if I get this right. Now, this is a Godwin Pattern Mark 5B bolter. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Godwin Pattern Mark 5B bolter. See, I did my research. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is a nice uh, planar view. It's a nice profile view, nice clean lines. So you know exactly where, what you know, what goes where, and so on. So I'll be using this, and I'll start modeling. However, uh, I couldn't find any corresponding top or front views. So again, this is where your tons of reference images really come into play. You know, they really help out, so you can actually see where what is what. So uh, jumping into Blender, I'm first. Uh, this is my default scene. Um, I'm going to get rid of my camera and my lamp because I'm just modeling. I'm not lighting or rendering anything, so I'm just going to delete them. I'm going to go, oh, before I do that, let me enable my screencast so you can actually see down here all the keys and the mouse clicks that I'm doing, okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to hit three on my numpad. I'm going to go, that means I'm in my right view now. So I'm basically what I'm about to do is I'm going to put this image as my background image right here. I'm going to hit N. That brings up my property bar, background images. I'm going to enable this, slide it open, add image, open. I'm going to go to here. Here is the bolter picture. Now, right now, the image, it says uh, the, the viewing axis is all views. I just want this to be in my right view. So I'm going to set it to right. I've got further options down here. I can change the opacity if I want. Um, whoa. Uh, I'll, I just undid everything. <laughs> I can change the opacity. I can change where it is, corresponding, you know, position, screen space. Uh, 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 that where the image is placed in my screen space yeah and of course the size so I'm gonna put it put everything back to where it was originally this is it close my property bar I'm then gonna hit control up arrow to maximize my viewport so that I have plenty of space and room to work with all right now uh, before we start a couple of things you have to see and that is basically how it's constructed so basically you've got this main body okay this area then you've got this this red area that's apparently bolted on you, you see these you can see these nuts and bolts right here and then you've got the the handguard that's again screwed on so 
and of course then you've got the the sights the rear sight the front sight these are apparently the tactical rails uh the magazine uh the grip and the trigger guard now these apparently are different objects barrel uh, this apparently would be the re uh, the re the guide rod i have no idea what that is <laughs> so basically we're looking at one two three four five six maybe seven and eight different pieces now one way of modeling this is that we model everything as one single giant unit personally i prefer modeling in such a manner as if you know as if in, in, in the similar manner of how the object is actually created so right now for example if you've got about seven different objects which are bolted together that is actually how I like to model. Uh, I'll model seven, seven different objects and then I'll put them together. Again, this is just how I model, okay? It's easier for me because um, that actually gives me a bit of more control over each and every different aspect of what I'm creating. Again, this is my personal philosophy. Your mileage may vary, okay? You can model this however you wish. So. Uh, I'm going to hit Shift A to bring up my add menu. I'm going to add a cube, hit Z to go into wireframe mode, hit tab to go into edit mode. Now I'm just going to add, I'm just going to sort of block things out. I'm just going to take this all the way here. I'm going to select these vertices here, add an edge loop. Select these vertices, move them out, select the edge loop again, move it down, yeah. add an edge loop here, add another one maybe here, go into face mode, select, oops, select this face, extrude it down. Go into vertex mode again. Um, in fact, you know what? I just made a mistake, I guess. Um, vertex mode. Yeah. I'm actually first going to move this down. Then I'm going to select. Yeah. This. So, scale Z zero makes it completely flat. Uh -huh. um, sorry. <clears throat> okay. Right. So, uh, this apparently looks fine. I'm going to tab out of edit mode. I'm now just going to make a cylinder. I'm going to move it here, rotate it. This is again just to give me an idea where the barrel goes uh, like so in fact let's scale it up slightly scale it in maybe and then yeah right about there oops vertex mode select these vertices move them out slightly all right Approximately, there's the barrel. Okay. Um, I'm going to select this, go into edit mode again. I'm going to add an edge loop here. In fact, I'm going to add the edge loop here. I'm going to add an edge loop here. And I'm going to add an edge loop right down the middle. Move this up. Add an edge loop here and one here. Select both of these vertices, move them up. Add one here, add another edge loop here. Select both of these vertices and move them up slightly. So now We've got this curvature going. 
Again, I'm not adding too much detail. This is just, you know, stuff that's there. That's it. Um, I'll leave this here. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a bit of a sore throat, so just bear with me. Thanks. Um, all right. Uh, the one thing that I need to see is, of course, is how wide this really is. So I go back here, if I open up this image, and you can see the width is approximately the same as the diameter of the muzzle of the barrel. So I select all of these vertices and I scale them in about this much. Yeah, yeah I think this, this would be Fine. All right. Okay. Now, so far, this is what we have. So far, so good. Now, again, I'm going to hit Shift A, create a new cube, go into edit mode, move this here, select Oops. Select both of these vertices, move them out here. Select these vertices, move them up here. And I'm going to select these. Yeah, they're they're actually I'm going to line it up with the frame of the bolter that we just made. So I'm just going to zoom in a lot. <laughs> yeah. loop here I'll add another one here and just like we did in this area I'm gonna add an edge loop right down the middle select it move it up add an edge loop here add another one here move both of these up here, add another one here, select both of them, move them up, and then I am going to select, oops, which it is center, select these, move them up slightly, add an edge loop here, go into face mode, select the bottom face, extrude it down like so. And then go back into vertex mode, go into my front view, select everything, and then scale it in approximately this much. So the height, the amount of space I have here, is equidistant oops, on both sides. Is that fine? No, it's much more in something like this. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Now this bad throat is really doing a number on me. Um, now this is the ejection port, this dark gray area, and this light, medium gray area is the racking handle, right? So uh, basically what happens with, with any firearm is when you insert a magazine, uh, you rack the, the gun once, the, the handle once, so it chambers around. So when you pull the trigger, the handle goes, well, you know, the gun fires, 
the handle automatically goes back with the recoil. Uh, the spent empty casing of the bullet that you just fired that pops out of the ejection port then the racking handle automatically moves forward while automatically chambering the next round so uh, I'm gonna add an, oops what did I just do shift to center control R and place next loop here Maybe, yeah, and of course an edge loop here. And don't worry, you see this line going? This one, the one above the highlighted edge? That's part of the frame, this one, okay? I'm going to add an edge loop. And finally add another one, the thing right about here, and be fine here. Okay, so, so far, so good. Um, all right, now for the sights. So again, shift A, Q, tab into edit mode move it up, select these vertices, move them down, select these vertices, move them forward, select these, move them back, uh, select these vertices, move them back, select these vertices, move them up slightly, uh, the this these vertices need to come forward and these one these need to go back slightly uh, <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna hit uh, shift D to duplicate I'm gonna move this all the way here I'm gonna select both of these vertices I'm gonna scale them long y-axis make it zero so they're completely flat then move them oops then move them forward I'm gonna zoom in to make sure that they're aligned damn it okay zoom in some more zoom in as much as I can yeah and then okay I'm gonna select these vertices move them up like so I'm gonna select both of these again scale Y zero move them here and I'm gonna so add an edge loop right about here Going to face mode, select these faces, extrude them up. I'm then going to add an edge loop here. <coughs> Excuse me. Move, oops, move these vertices. Like so. Move this one a bit to the back. Edge loop. Vertex, vertex, select the vertices, move them here. Add another edge loop, select these vertices, move them here. Add an edge loop here, select these vertices, move them back slightly. Maybe add another edge loop, select these vertices, and move them back. All right, now. I'm going to go into my front view, select all of them, but because these are sights, they need to be fairly thin, as you can see. So, um, if, you know what? Uh, let's take a look at this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, about this much would be fine. 
Now what I'm actually going to do is I am going to taper this area. So uh, I'm going to select these vertices. Uh, not okay. Select these vertices. Yeah. And then just start scaling them in. I know can be a bit of a tedious process <laughs> in fact it's very tedious all right and just select the top there we go that makes a pretty good front post Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's select these again. Since this is a fictional gun, well, um, I I can take some um, creative liberties, so to speak. <laughs> uh, so yeah, why not? Uh, okay. So I'm gonna maybe scale this out slightly. Select these vertices and scale them out so they're in line with each other, like so. Okay. So we've got our front sight, our rear sight. Um, the rear sight is usually notched. So uh, I'm going to add two edge loops, oops, yeah, and this is what I'm going to do, move this down maybe this much, move these here, Move these here. In fact, I'm going to move them all the way down till here. So from that point, I can actually extrude the, the this spine, these rails, so to speak. Uh, let me just fix this. All right. And I'm going to go into my face mode, select these, and extrude them up. Go into vertex mode, select these vertices, line them up, line them up here. All right. Now I need an edge loop. Whoa. I think I made a mistake here somewhere. Not to worry, we shall fix this shortly. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to add an edge loop here so it corresponds to this area. Now, problem that we see is select this, move this in, 
select this, move this in. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Select the face. I'm gonna hit E. Then now because now if I continue extruding, this is what it's gonna do. It, it's gonna extrude along its normal, right? So I'm gonna hit Escape. Okay. Now the extruded face is still selected. So I can simply then move it out. I'll scale it along y-axis, make it zero so it's completely flat. Um, yeah. And we need two edge loops here, so select this face, extrude like so, and this is slightly wider. So I'm going to select all of these polygons and I'm going to line them up okay these are lined up I need to select this and this and move these up in fact select all of these Scale Z zero, so now they're completely in line to one another. Select these, move them in. Select these, move them in. And now I'm going to just select these, scale them X zero. Select these, scale X zero. And now they're completely aligned to one another. Now I'm going to select this polygon face, delete this face, select this face, uh, delete this face, and I'm going to go into edge mode, select these two edges, hit Alt M to merge, and I'm going to say merge at seven. Whoa, sorry, should do that with the vertices. Yeah, Alt M merge at center. Center. Merge at center, merge at center. And there we go. All right. Well, this is taking shape quite nicely. Okay, what's left? Um, should I extrude this? No, why the hell not? Let's add an edge loop here. Add an edge loop here. And, <clears throat> excuse me, edge loop down the middle. Select both of these. Um, and sort of move them apart. So, select these faces and then extrude. Go into vertex mode, select these vertices, select this one as well, move them up. Select these vertices, move them down slightly. Okay, so far, so good, yeah, yeah, okay, now the last thing, we no, we've got two more major things to do, uh, the handguard and the grip, so we'll start off with the handguard first, again, shift A, and I'm going to add the famous cube, <laughs> uh, move it here, Select these vertices, move them up. Select these vertices and move them here. Now I'm going to select 
these vertices and do the same thing. I'm going to zoom in and line them up. Again, like I said, I, I, like I said earlier, you can model everything out of a single cube. You know, you can add add your edge loops and you can extrude stuff and you know you can do that. Of course, sure. You know, uh, the reason I like doing it in this particular manner, where each and every single object is different, is because it allows me to be a bit modular, so to speak. If, for example, tomorrow I don't like the handguard. I want to replace it with some other element. I can do that very simply. Okay, because it's a separate object. Eventually, what I basically do is after we're done modeling, we're going to attach everything together. Okay, we're going to join everything together. Everything is eventually going to become one single object. And then you can actually start unwrapping and your texturing and you know whatnot. You can do all of that stuff. Okay, all right. Select oops, all of this, and yeah, it is the same width as the frame. By the way, this is what I call the frame. Uh, this thing. Okay, that's the frame. This I call the upper. <laughs> this is the handguard, the sights, of course. And then eventually, of course, we're going to have the grip and the magazine. And this, of course, is the barrel. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, this is done. So, yeah. I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to add, whoops. the right object. I'm going to add this, and this, and this. Now, um, of course, there I, I could use the array modifier here. I can just make one this little chunk and then just duplicate it forward. The reason I'm not doing that is because as, as I said earlier, this is a modeling 101 tutorial. Okay, this is where you get to model everything without the use of fancy schmancy modifiers. All right, I'm going to add edge loops in the middle. <coughs> Excuse me, select these vertices, go into vertex mode. Select these vertices. Move them. In fact, select these as well. Move them down like so. Now, since this is just a drawing, so they're fairly uneven, this is the only one which I see which is quite even. So I'm actually using this curve as the reference guide. This curve. Okay? All of the others are uneven. You know? So I'm just using this one as a reference guide. I'm going to add another curve here, here. Gonna select again these vertices. And move them up. Okay. Now uh, you're actually gonna notice that these are indentations. Okay? This area actually goes way in. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I am going to go into my face mode. I'm going to select these faces and make sure yeah yeah they, these these look fine okay yeah. I'm gonna hit I'm gonna isolate 
this object because I just want to focus on this. So I'm going to hit the slash key on the numpad. So I'm just, I've sort of isolated this, okay? Everything else is hidden, completely hidden. And, okay, I'm going to hit E, then escape. Go into my front viewport. I'm first going to scale it in. I'm going to keep control pressed while I'm scaling in so that this is, so uh, I've basically got my snapping on. You can actually see the amount of scaling I'm doing right down here. Just watch this area, okay? See this? Now I'm scaling uniformly. Okay? So uh, let's see, I, in fact, I need to look at it like this. I'm first going to scale it yeah, inward, scale X along the X axis, keeping control pressed. Now, in my side view, I'm going to scale along Z, keeping control pressed. Now, I'm going to move these edges up. And what we have is this. Okay. Uh, but here you can see that it's fairly rounded. Well, again, like I said, okay, and here there are no indentations. These are just, you know, strips. So again, like I said, uh, being a fictional gun, artists tend to take creative license. So uh, don't worry about it. So, um, since this is a bit rounded off, which makes sense, you know, because this is supposed to be a handguard, it's supposed to be rounded off, so it's a bit ergonomic. I'm going to go into my edit mode. I'm going to add one more to this down the middle, add another one here, add another one here. I'm going to go into vertex mode, and I am going to select these, move them up, then I'm going to select these and move them up slightly. So yeah, it is now slightly rounded off. Okay, all right, yeah. In fact, what I would like to do is select these. Can I move these up? Of course I can. Yeah. Select these. Move these. Yeah. is ready. Haha. <laughs> Gonna hit slash on the numpad again to come out of isolation mode. Now, here's the problem. This object is overlapping with this. So, what I need to do is fairly simple. I am going to... I am going to... Yes. Select all of these vertices. Oops. And move them back. Maybe somewhere here. That was it. Nice and fairly simple. And now, moving along, let's come back to our grip right here. So, again, Shift A, Cube, tab into edit mode. And this is actually going to be very tricky. Um, let's move this here. Let's move this here. These need to overlap perfectly. So, 
Let's move this down. Yeah, this much would be funny. And this. Scale this. Let's make it completely straight. So scale Y zero and move it here. I'm going to have to add an edge loop right about here. I'm going to select these vertices, move them here. I'm going to add an edge loop here, move these vertices back <coughs> excuse me select these and maybe move them here yeah select add an edge loop select these vertices move them back now you know what in fact yeah let's do it like this an edge loop here and select, select, move them back. And then, let's go into face mode. I'm going to select this, extrude it slightly. I am going to select this, go here, and I'm going to leave this one like this. And I'll just get to it why I did that. Okay, now, going to face mode again, select this face, extrude all the way down here, move it like this, go into vertex mode, select these vertices, move it all, move them all the way down here. In fact, we should move them something like this this yeah now I'm going to add an edge loop here select this move this out I'm going to add an edge loop going right down the middle add an edge loop here select these now I just don't want them, I can arbitrarily um, move them like this. I'm going to add in a couple of edge loops here and then make this curvature, right? Uh, let's just center here, or here, or here. So what I'm going to do, I mean, like I said, there are two ways of doing that. One, I can actually arbitrarily move them slightly like this. or I can, <clears throat> excuse me, hit Shift V, and I can slide my vertices like so. I can then select these vertices, Shift V, as in Victor. Now, again, I'm eyeballing right now because the drawing is just not perfect. What the hell is that? Oh, come on. Come on! Yeah. Thank you. And again, like we did with our handguard, I am going to select all of these faces. I'm going to hit E and escape. And then I'm just going to scale it down. No, let's see. Scale one Y. No, uh, approximately like 
move this here. Rotate it slightly. And now comes the tough part. I'm just moving these vertices around so they line up properly. Oops. Select, move here. Select, move. Select, move. Select. Move. And select. Move. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Let's select these polygons down here, faces down here. Let's tube them out. Go into front view. Now, let's select all of them and bring them in. Now, the grip tends to be fairly thin. Like, about, well, this is still a bit too thick. X. Okay, now that we've got the dimensions right, uh, let's select these vertices, bring them down here. Now, as you probably would have guessed, I'm about to start making the trigger guard. <coughs> Excuse me. So, select these vertices, move them forward. Select this vertex, these vertices, bring them here. Select these vertices, bring them here. Select these vertices, bring them here. Select these vertices, oops, hit H to hide. I didn't want to do that. Bring these down. Select these, bring them down. You don't have to be very precise about this, okay? Now, once this is done, let's select Aha! This one's supposed to be something like this. Uh -huh. Bring it here. here bring it here just adding an extra edge loop um, you never know if I'm gonna need it um, I mean I'm not sure if I I know if I'm gonna need it you know just being careful adding stuff where I might need it so, move these vertices, these vertex here.
add one here, just for the just to even things out. Okay, um, let's select these vertices, these polygons. Sorry, again, I'm going to go into isolate mode and. Let's see, what if I delete them? Go into edge mode, select this entire edge loop, hit F to fill, go into vertex mode, select these, hit J to join. Alright, so far so good. Select these, J to join. No. Okay. Join, yep. Join. Join, join, select these, they should join, and they do, and there we go, coming out of isolation mode, okay, alright, now, last but not least, the magazine. Uh, that is actually something which we might want to get into a bit later on because I think for these, for the magazine, we might need to use a modifier. Um, it will be easier if we model it straight and then apply a modifier and bend it. So I guess I, I'm going to have to break the cardinal rule of not using any fancy schmancy modifiers. <laughs> um, right, so... Uh, I think this should about conclude it for this week. Uh, next week, we're going to start adding a ton of details like, uh, well, you know, like these screws here, uh, the ejection port, the racking handle, the magazine release, uh, the trigger, and whatever these doodads are, apparently, the guide rod. Uh, we're going to start working on the barrel itself. We're going to add this, uh, the compensator, compensator hole. Maybe just use a bit of our creative license and turn this little straight spine up here into a Picatinny into a Picatinny rail, you know, where they could attach scopes and whatnot. Alright, so uh, thanks for watching. I hope you had fun. I hope you guys learned something. Again, this was very basic. And, uh, next week, we're, we're going to start adding detail. We're going to start flushing things out. Uh, for now, this was just about creating a basic blocking structure of the bolter. So, uh, if you have any feedback, any comments, any suggestions, feel free to share them. Um, and I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.